Hi, I'm Joanna Juvelis, Belmont Media Center's News Director, and you're watching News Now. Today's guests are Gabriel Disler, Belmont's Staff Urban Planner, Lydia Slocum, Regional Housing Planner for the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and Betsy Lipson, Co-Chair of the Belmont Housing Trust. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you. Good morning. There, you're all here to tell us about an upcoming forum called Belmont, Building Belmont's Future. So Betsy, can you tell me about the history of this project? Sure. So um, as co-chair of the Housing Trust, um, I'll say that uh, we're all volunteers. We're all residents who are volunteers and um, we're on the Housing Trust to help the town advance affordable housing. And um, part of that is responding to the uh, state requirement that we develop a housing production plan. And we did so in 2018, and the new revised one will come out in 2023. Uh, this is a state regulated document. It has very particular elements that have to go into it. And a big part that the state encourages is community engagement because the plan, it's a strategic report, is only as good as the input is from residents and residents respond to the data that's produced and then really incorporate the vision for the future of Belmont that we all have uh, into a strategy. I see. Um, Lydia, can, can you explain what a housing production plan is? Yes, yeah. And, and first, I just want to say uh, who MAPC is. So my organization oh, sure. is the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, we are a, the regional planning agency for the greater Boston region, which includes 101 cities and towns around Boston, in, including Belmont. Um, and so we work across a, a lot of different planning areas, but uh, my team is the housing um, team and we um, do quite a lot of housing production plans. Um, and so, you know, we're um, hired by the, by the town to help um, support and, and go through this housing production planning process. Um, and a housing production plan or an HPP, as I'll probably refer to it, um, is really, you know, as Betsy was saying, it's, it's really a community driven planning tool and it's a way for municipalities to develop strategies um, to meet their local housing needs. And so it has a five year period of time and, um, you know, it is part of the compliance um, with the state law called Chapter 40B. Um, and so it does have some um, as Betsy was saying, you know, regulatory requirements, but really it is a community driven effort. And so we want to, you know, use it as a way to engage all of Belmont to think about what the local housing needs are and then how to, you know, use those needs and the feedback from residents to identify some strategies that the town can undertake to advance housing production in the next five years. Um, and then I would say, you know, as a tool and part of the compliance piece, it does have to be approved both locally by the planning board and the select board, and then ultimately approved by the state, the Department of Housing and Community Development. So that's kind of the end. At the very end, you know, that's where we, we all hope to be um, in March of 20, uh, March, May of 2023, um, is with a, a state, a locally and state approved plan. I see. So if, a t let's say a town does have enough affordable housing, do they need a housing production plan? Or is it just for towns that don't have enough affordable housing like, like Belmont? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. So from the state, from the compliance side, a housing production plan, you know, is a, a way that um, communities, again, can identify their local housing needs and set actual numeric targets for housing production every year. And if a, a community has, again, a state approved um, plan and they make incremental housing production progress, they can, you know, um, stay in compliance with the state housing uh, law. So if a community does already meet the 10% the goal that is also part of that same state law, the chapter 40B, they don't technically need a housing production plan, but I will say that uh, we do actually work, MAPC works with communities that may already be tech, you know, above that 10%, but they realize that the 10% is not really in line with their local need. Um, and so a housing production plan can also be a really great tool. And, and when MAPC thinks of it as a great tool for that locally driven planning effort and a way for a community to kind of come together and understand their needs. And again, really think about strategies that work for their community to continue to meet that need um, as it changes over time. And I will just also add to Lydia's point that um, 
we envision this housing production plan to guide future planning initiatives in the town of Belmont in the next five years. So even if we had reached the 10% goal, we'd still like to have this plan in place to guide future housing and development needs in town. Right, now, um, Betsy, maybe you can talk about the, get into more about the, the need in Belmont. As you are on the yeah, line. well, I, actually, I'm going to ask Lydia to do that because as the housing trust, um, you know, taking on an initiative like this, it's hard probably for some a resident to understand, but it's massive. The data analysis that's required is massive. That's why Lydia said MAPC is often hired by towns. And in our case, we were lucky. We got a grant. Um, to work with towns to do that data analysis. We also recognize the importance of community engagement and we had funding from residents who contributed through a community development tax credit, um, a small fund in which we hired a local community development organization, um, Metro West Collaborative Development. So they are partnering as well with us and they're doing focus groups with targeted stakeholders in town who we know traditionally are most affected by high housing costs to find out how might the situation have changed since the last time we did the plan. Um, yes. So I'm gonna have Lydia talk a bit about the data because she's been um, the data nerd on this. Okay. Um, I did wanna refer though um, to an example we all I think in town, if you've been around, you know what has happened at McLean. And so McLean is a great story for the value of a really good uh, housing production plan. Um, several years ago, when uh, McLean and their developer approached the planning board with a vision for what they wanted to develop on the parcel that had been set aside for development, the initial plan was for high-end housing um, that looked beautiful. It actually was, you know, dreamy. I'd love to live there, but really is not um, in line with what our housing production plan had identified as the need. So the housing trust, you know, went back into our corner and we actually brought in a technical assistant to help us construct um, based on our data, um, a different plan. So an alternate proposal to go back to the developer in McLean and said, hey, what about this instead? And, you know, it became a really nice conversation with that developer. I, I give that developer total props for rolling up his sleeves and saying, okay, let me see if the numbers will work. And um, lo and behold, that was approved by town meeting, that plan, and it's going to be, you know, built. So what it ends up doing for us is we will have a set number of home ownership properties at that new site. I think it's 15. Um, and uh, Okay, wait, I'm looking at my notes. 40 age-restricted um, for sale town homes. Um, and 15% of those, six, are going to be affordable home ownership. And then there'll be two rental buildings, one of which will be age-restricted because we realized through the housing production plan, there's a real need for people who've grown, you know, their families in town. They want to stay in town. Their church is here. Their community is here. They don't want to leave but they're ready to downsize. And so that need is gonna be resolved. Um, and then next to it, another apartment um, building and that is not age restricted. And both of those will have um, affordable units set aside. The developer also agreed to have some of those affordable units based on our housing production plan be uh, affordable for a lower income because we felt like based on the area median income, like how much, and Lydia can get into that, it's really hard to afford housing. It's really hard. And so we said, well, what about people who just can't make that level? Um, so all that's to say is when you have a housing production plan, you suddenly have a tool for the conversation. You come to the table with data that you can say, we've done our homework and we have data and we have strategies. And can we talk in a way that responds to those? Thank you, Betsy. Lydia, let's get into the data. Yeah, um, so I will just put a, an early plug that um, sharing out of sort of findings from the, the housing needs assessment, which is um, part of every housing production plan and, and is really the, the quantitative data crunching that Betsy was um, speaking about. 
that's going to be a big part of the forum this week. So I put up, you know, hopefully this is a plug for folks who want to learn more about the data, um, you know, come to the forum. And, um, and if you can't make the forum, you know, it will be recorded and, and there will be a survey that is online afterwards that will also um, allow people to kind of hear more about the data. Um, but I will say, you know, I think a lot of the dynamics that Betsy spoke about from the last housing production planning process in Belmont um, still remain true, um, you know, just some of the, you know, a part of the comprehensive housing needs assessment, you know, we look at demographic data of the, of the community, we look at um, housing stock, you know, what is the, the physical um, availability, the, the size and um, tenure of, of homes available in Belmont. Um, and I mean both ownership opportunities as well as, as rental. Um, and then we also, of course, look at affordability. And, and that is part of, you know, looking at household incomes, the cost of housing, and then particularly looking at the rates of cost burden. And so housing cost burden is um, a measure um, and it's a, you know, households are considered cost burden if they pay 30% or more of their total monthly income towards housing. Um, and so in Belmont, we see that about 30% of all households in Belmont are cost burdened. Um, and there's actually a very similar percentage across owners and renters. And that's a little bit unique. You know, many communities see far lower rates of cost burden for owners, but in Belmont, you know, A, the cost of housing is, is very high. It's gone up about 30% in the past five years since the, the town did their last um, housing production plan. Um, and so just the cost of mortgages alone, there's also similar rates of cost burden for owners who don't have a mortgage. So, you know, they're just struggling, they may be lower income, they may be on very low fixed incomes. Um, so there's housing needs sort of across the, the tenure spectrum, um, across the household types. We see high rates of cost burden for single seniors, for example, sort of uh, back speaking to what Betsy was mentioning. Um, and so I think there's a need and the way that the housing production, the comprehensive housing needs assessment kind of allows us to walk through a series of data points that kind of put all the pieces together um, and then at the forum, and, and especially through the um, online survey, what we really want to hear from the community is what, what of that data really resonates, which, which is surprising to folks, which maybe reflects their own experience with housing, which of those data points, you know, can become kind of the top priorities for the town to think about over the next five years. Thank you so much, Lydia. Gabriel, can you tell our viewers about this forum? When is it? How can they watch it or attend it? All the details. Absolutely. So the forum is this Thursday. Uh, the doors open at 6 p.m. The forum will be taking place in person at the Beach Street Center in Belmont, but there's also an option to attend over Zoom if you uh, are unable to make the event in person. Um, the doors, as I said before, open at 6 p.m., but the event begins at 6.30. Uh, we ask everyone who wishes to attend to register online beforehand and the uh, link to registration is available on the flyer. Um, the forum will be about um, an hour and a half and we'll discuss uh, the demographics of the town of Belmont, every, uh, everything that we're taking into consideration in order to create the uh, 2023 housing production plan. And we're also gonna have breakout sessions so we can uh, engage directly with members of the public. Uh, you'll be able to participate in a breakout session, both if you're in person and over Zoom. And we'll also have um, a Q&A period at the end. So you can ask uh, every, anyone uh, representing this project questions about uh, where the housing production plan stands and what else needs to be done moving forward. That sounds really great. And then what will happen next? Will there be other forums? Or is this the only one that there will be? I'm just curious what, what happens next in the timeline. Yeah, um, so I would say the, um, the this fall forum is also coinciding with um, a few focus groups that the Metro, uh, Metro West Collaborative Development is hosting. So um, I know they hosted one and then they will plan to host more in the future. And, um, hopefully we can get um, Elisa Gardner Todrias is the um, she's uh, the contact at Metro West who is you know folks can reach out to her if they're interested in joining and again that's focus groups are another great way for us to gather the more qualitative the experiential feedback from from folks in Belmont who we know uh, we want to hear from you know we want to hear about their experience living here um, so that feedback from the focus groups and from this forum um, you know will kind of combine with some of the data analysis that we spoke about earlier. 
Um, the next main scope of work for, for us as a project team is looking at development constraints and opportunities so that those are things like what are the, the physical constraints, you know, around around different around town, what are some of the infrastructure constraints, um, what are existing programs and policies that the town has that we might be able to amplify or tweak to kind of make them more um, impactful. Um, and then from the opportunity side, part of every housing production plan is a requirement for a community to identify specific parcels of land that have the potential for housing development. It doesn't mean that a housing development necessarily is going to go on that parcel, but it again, going back to what Betsy spoke about earlier with McLean, it's a way for the town to identify these proactively and to be able to then bring that information um, into any development conversations um, in the near future. Um, and so all of the feedback that we gather this fall, so uh, absolutely, we really want to hear from folks, um, all that feedback and all the sort of quantitative analysis um, helps us to establish some goals and strategies for housing production that align with the community priorities. And we will bring those goals and, goals and strategies um, and some um, draft information about um, opportunity areas to our next um, public forum, which will be sometime hopefully in March. Um, and so that's the next main community-wide opportunity to kind of see where we've gotten uh, in the housing production planning process. And again, lots more feedback um, to be gathered at that point. We likely will have another similar to, to this forum this week, a, a point in time forum, and then some sort of online survey where that's how we're really asking for um, people to take time with the information and provide us feedback so that we can make sure that the plan is aligning with what the community is telling us. Um, and then I think, you know, after that, I mentioned at the very beginning, kind of the approval process, there's the actual drafting of the plan itself that takes a lot of time because there's a lot of information. So we will, you know, be working on a full draft plan um, that has uh, all of the data information, summary of all the feedback we've heard, those goals and strategies for housing production, incremental um, housing production targets, and identifies those opportunity areas. And all of that will become a housing production plan that will you know, be presenting to the planning and select boards um, for their hopeful approval um, sometime in May. Thank you so much, Lydia. Um, has Belmont had a housing production plan before? This isn't our first one, right? Right, Joanna, um, I mentioned there was one that we um, had approved in 2018 and that's what we used when we, um, I wanna use their word negotiated, but when we, collaborated with the McLean developer. Yeah, we have had one. This is an update. That's great. Um, I just want to add, you know, as we're talking about housing production, it's such a um, wonky term. And, uh, you know, I would like all of us to sort of pause and think about home, the notion of home, and um, that we, home is so connected to ourselves and what we value, our safety as it came up in the pandemic, of course, and, you know, environmentally in terms of the home you live in and the environment and the ecosystem and whether it's pollution or whether it's parks, um, all of those things matter. Home is also about who your neighbors are and who you get to know and how formative that is if you have children in terms of their experiences as children and the kind of um, whether it's cultures or languages or different backgrounds that people are learning about, um, that affects the kind of schooling, that affects the local restaurants that you might have because you might have people who really value, you know, ethnic cuisine. So a startup restaurant is visited often. It, it's about, it really is the, um, the way we often think of our worldview or our values comes back to home. And so while you hear this term housing production plan, I know it's terribly wonky and I apologize for that. That has nothing to do, that's the state, right? Okay, but think about home and think about community and think about what you want in your community and come to the forum on Thursday and learn and express. That's the whole idea of this strategy. Thank you, uh, Betsy. That's a perfect closing to our Zoom today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to News Now, Belmont Media Center's news program. Until next time, take care.